Previously on Sailing Aquarius. Thank you for all the help. Most welcome back. As well as we appreciate the salam. Yeah, Most welcome, welcome Tanzania. Nice fishing. Yep, yeah, we are getting ready to leave. So, we started our passage. Dar es Salaam is behind us. As you can see, the seas are strong. How was your checkout process? Oh, that was a headache. That was a major headache. It's a bit rolly, good winds, I mean uh, stronger winds and um, our first passage in season 6, Indian Ocean Passage, number 4. Number 1 was a sailing from Thailand to Maldives, number 2 was from Maldives to Seychelles. And number three was sailing from Seychelles to Africa, Mon. So what is your overall impression about Tanzania? I really like Tanzania. You know, we did a safari. That was really, really nice. And uh, both yacht clubs, Tangi Yacht Club, Dar es Salaam Yacht Club, unbelievably nice people, had a great time. We did careening, which is the first time. We had a problem with our water maker and the Salator helped us immensely to get our water maker back up and going again. We thank, you know, Vincent over at the Salator. The, yeah, the Salator. Oh my God. I don't know if I could have done it without him. Anyways, now we're heading off, leaving Africa to go to Africa. Oh wow. Oh boy. Sounds like fun. This is the long passage to get us right up to the horn, and it's going to be a long one. Along the coast of Somalia. Yeah, so that's what we have to look forward to. Soon we discovered that our recently purchased radar, specifically for this passage, is not what we expected. The radar's range is 24 nautical miles, but it did not see huge cargo ships even less than 9 nautical miles away. But we have to deal with what we have for now. Maybe it's just some settings that we have missed. We're on our way to Sukutra. 
looks a lot better like this because the sun's not right behind her. It's been already two nights. As we get to Mogadishu, we should be 300 nautical miles away. So we're leaning quite a lot. That's why we're camping like that. But it is much, much better than the first two days because the first two days it was just beating into super high waves always choppy always moving we didn't feel like eating we didn't feel like doing anything so now it's a little bit better yeah it's just relaxing not much to do winds kind of calm down we're about 600 and stuff miles and actually 560 and Captain Ken. Yes, gorgeous. So you turn towards the culture? Not completely, just a little bit. We're you're getting some winds that were coming up and uh, we we're starting to beat into it again. So I thought it was about time we turned more towards the future. just curting around Socotra and Mogadishu is being the most dangerous place but we haven't seen much of the boats. We've only seen three tanker boats. I think one on the second day and two on the third day but we haven't seen hardly anything out here. We've shut off our AIS so we're not transmitting anymore. We're we're just almost completely blind. We have a radar going, but uh, nobody would be able to find us out here. It would be so difficult. Now is just smooth sailing. We didn't run engine at all. Not even a gen set because the days are pretty nice. Aquarius is all salty. We had this short rain wash off all the salt and a minute later was like whoosh a big wave we are all fully salty so now we headed to east island of Socotra that belongs to Yemen and uh, we have an agent set up there we can receive visas on arrival we sent all of our documentation to the agent but with our buddy boat we talked that if all goes well and Gulf of Aden winds are favorable we might even skip Socotra and just keep going to Djibouti which is about another five days thousand nautical miles and the winds are very shifty now our average is still 7.2 knots but now you can see it's wow pretty low we done more than one third of a passage Captain Ken becomes Captain Cook Ken. Captain Cook. Garlic loaves you added. That's what's left. the equator at night and now we in the northern hemisphere we need to give a Neptune some alcohol I'm just gonna pour some rum we're supposed to drink too we crossed the equator for 13th time I believe 12th time anyways Neptune, thank you so much for keeping us safe and please keep us safe. And I have to do that too. You have to do that too. You are the captain. 
I need to be sober. It's for Neptune. It's not for you. Look how much there is. Thank you, Neptune. I mirror his expression right down to the thin lip smile that conveys anything but friendliness. That's what it really was. Now uh, we're gonna put the pole out on our Genoa because we're we're going almost dead down. Minutes. Our average was six knots. Let's see what we can get after we put the balloon around. For the last 50, almost one minute, is seven knots. So what was it before? 6.3. So we gained 0.7 knots. Yes. 714 nautical miles to go. So it's about four days, 10 hours. And uh, we are 250 nautical miles away from closest Somalia shore. We were moving really fast and that's nice. Although I prefer to sail a little slower during the nights, but taking in consideration that we are sailing next to Somalia and Somalian piracy risk area, we wanted to move as fast as possible. We're moving along. We might make a 200 mile day. Another sunset aboard Aquarius. Most of the boats, including us, do not transmit their AIS signal in these pirate infested waters, as well as keep minimum lights for navigation. Therefore, radar is our main tool to locate boats around us. And with our current radar, it was not easy. And we had a stressful encounter with other boat, which we saw only four nautical miles in front of us. Stressful, but it got resolved. Now they're getting farther away. I assume it's a fairly normal thing. They hailed us at VHF and it was the same boat that we had an incident with them at night. Well, I guess please don't uh, drop your net in front of me tonight. Of course not, they were in the night. Don't worry. Yes, the waves got a little bit smaller. So this is the current that we're talking about. Where we currently are, the current is 2.9 knots, so 3 knots. Next morning, when it was time to charge our batteries, our gen set would shut off a couple minutes later because of overheating multiple times. The end of the gen set. So we're gonna change this pump. What's wrong with the gen set? I, I think that uh, something in the, the water flow that goes to the exhaust elbow is all plugged up because I'm not getting 
good water flow all the way through. So we really, really hope to get out of these currents, get into the place where there's no current, and then join this current going up north. Coffee, my dear. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, my love. Hold on. Okay, we want to get into the big currents and we have to take to change our sails. We're not going to take off the ballooner because we might need it and it's only for a short time. job being pretty and we want to catch those currents because here we're getting about um, 3.7 knots with us and in these spots 4.3 knots with us we are averaging 9.7 yeah the waves are big also right this way is just huge actually they're not huge they're around three meters and we must not become dependent on off-world fuel both fuel and aircraft must be gathered and saved for the day of maximum effort all stood with a Beyond the ship, the city of Arikin lay cold and green right in the light of the miles. northern sun. It wasn't the lighter that excited Stilgar's war, or the moon, but the construction for which the lighter was only the center post. So we took in a little bit more of a sail. So now we have a sliver. We buckled up for mayhem. Locked in. Send that message to our friends. Hopefully this is the last day of the crossing. And this hopefully will be the last day of the crossing. There's the sunset. Through this one. But it's getting pretty ugly out here. So we're doing what our, our plan is. We're gonna continue on the same route for as long as we can and then turn downwind. And then we'll be almost directly downwind, which will be a ni nice, nicer ride than this. And then we can take more, more wind. If we get hit with 40 knots of wind, it'll seem like 30 if we're going downwind. So we'll head downwind, make the corner, and then duck in behind this as quick as we can. If we, if we have to, we'll go 50 miles off and come back. But uh, we're gonna get the best angle we can with what we've got with our engine, everything. That was a night. It was okay. A bit sporty. Just a bit. Yep, we've been adjusting sails for the last 15 minutes. Wind 
was ripping really hard and the waves were big, but we were hoping to be in the island lee pretty soon and get sheltered from that. We rounded eastern corner of the island 11 nautical miles distance as there are supposed to be uncharted rocks. Conditions got worse and this time we were sailing into the wind. We couldn't wait to get closer to the island and get sheltered. I think I've seen enough. I'm ready to go someplace else. Land ho! I see the mountains. I see the land. Please part the seas and open up. What do you mean the land the seas? We're just gonna sink in the bottom. Hopefully we'll get some shields from the land here soon. What do you think? We will. And before you'd have you see the period. Now they're just messed up. As we got closer to the island, rather than getting better, it was getting even worse. 50 knots sustained winds, huge frequent waves rolling Aquarius over and hitting us with such force that our fully buckled cockpit was completely drenched. I believe we were getting some sort of funnel effect from the mountains on the island. Before our spirits were somewhat high as we hoped to be sheltered soon. But at this point, to be honest, I even did not see any point in filming, as survival was the only goal. Our Amel Super Maramu is made for this kind of weather. It proved so, and we appreciate every bit of it. Our two bedrooms are watertight, which were kept locked up. Many times it felt we're gonna be rolled over, but it kept going on. To make it worse, Ken started feeling really bad. He had internal bleeding already for a day or two, and it was getting worse. I cannot even tell how much it meant having a buddy boat with us, and an agent who informed us that he will take us to the hospital as soon as we arrive. We made it, and so did our buddy boat. Such a relief. We arrived to Socotra, and that was our hardest passage. Next on Sailing Aquarius. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those. They said they came from Spanish. Oh. Yeah.